Hey everyone, Tori the Crafty Girl here, and today I am so excited. I just thrifted this vintage Singer sewing machine. It's actually a child's sewing machine, but it I did a little bit of research and it says that it's actually supposed to be just like a grown-up version but just shrunk down really small um so i haven't actually looked at it i haven't unboxed it i did pay quite a bit for it i mean with girl math i paid zero right um but it was at one of my favorite thrift stores that has it, this thrift store this thrift store my this is where i went um which is global neighborhood thrift here in spokane washington and um they do a ton of work with refugees and with their work program and it's such a great organization i actually support them monetarily anyway so the fact that this was 42 dollars yes, $42, um, was totally worth it because I mean, I, you know, I donate anyway. So in my mind, I'm like, oh, girl math, it's free because I was, you know, I donate. So anyway, with that said, we're going to unbox it together. We're going to see if it works. And, uh, I am really excited. We're in a different location. So things may look a little weird. Um, it's because today is really warm outside. Um, and my office, my basement is just dark. It's so dark in there. And I feel like just being down in the basement is really smothering. Um, even though that's where all my fabric is and that's where all of my yarn is, that's where everything is. But this is our bonus garage office. So I have all of the things that I've made. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like a craft graveyard of all the things that I've made that I don't sell. So let me, before we dive into this, let me, let me just show you all the things I'm looking at. So for example, <laughs> we have this whole display right here that I uh, have. Um, I did a market last year and uh, you know, we have some koozies, we have a bunch of keychains, earrings, uh, cute little ears. Um, so there's all of these. Over here, I got in this kick of uh, making all of these little, um, they look like this, they're cotton face scrubs. And then I just made really fun little tops for the jars. So there's that. And then if we come on over here, uh, we have some hats that I made, some water bottle holders, a bag, some more bags I made. So yeah, it's it's definitely the crafting graveyard. But as you can see, there's way more space in here and the lighting is definitely a, a lot better. So let's dive right in to the unboxing. Fingers crossed it works. And I'm really excited. Woo! Now I did grab a couple of pieces of scrap fabric. So we have a couple of pieces of fabric. I grabbed a pair of uh, my scissors, um, a seam ripper, and some tweezers. These are always useful when I'm, um, when I'm using my sewing machine. So here is what she looks like and let's uh get a better view here still looks really dark in here um but this is the box so it's essentially you know has the box with it which is very rare and here's the little top oh the top is so cute it's super heavy by the way so there's a little top all right unbox all right well first of all we have a cover the cover is in great condition it's in this like 70s orange which is awesome oh my gosh how cute is this how cute is this um uh, perfect condition perfect condition okay oh look at how cute okay and then this She's, she's hardcore. Like this is, this is plastic, but it definitely feels heavier. Um, okay. So we have our cord here. I have to reach that over there. There is our cover. What else is in here? Anything else? Oh, okay. I'm going to see what else is in here. Anything exciting? Just a couple of pieces of cardboard. That's not exciting. How to make your clothes bag. Make a clothes bag. So it gives you a little pattern here. Oh, this is fabulous. Anything else in here? All right, and then we have uh, the model 50. Oh my gosh. Sorry, my dog just walked in here because I left the door open and she just scared me. Um, 
oh my gosh, it's so cute. Model 50D. I'm looking to see if there's a date on here. It definitely looks, yep, 1961. So this machine is from 1961. Um, so what I will say about this is, you know, today's technology really is based on this throwaway technology, which is really crappy because we have so many things that end up in the landfills and we're in this buy new culture. Um, you know, something breaks or it doesn't work the way you want it to. So we just we throw it away um so something like this this quality of craftsmanship is uh, stands the test of time oh well fingers crossed again let's let's hope it stands the test of time um so 1961 is you know how long we've had this now one thing i am realizing it does not have the spool pin which that is is necessary to put your yarn on um but i can make that work what else getting to know our machine. Okay, so let's see. We have, get this over here so you can read it with me. So this is our tension bar. This one doesn't look quite the same. Oh, there's a hand wheel. Okay, oh, there it is. So there's our, okay, so there's our hand wheel, our needle. There's already a needle in there. That's actually surprising. Um, the presser bar lifter is in the back. Okay, that makes sense. Needle is in there, presser foot. Yep, so we have all that. Feed dogs. We have our seam guide. What is a seam guide? This one does not have that. It looks like there is something there. Sew lever. So we have sew and stop. So that is all the options here. Sew and stop. We have a motor switch to turn on the motor. We have our hand wheel and spool. Okay, so I looked at all the parts. To operate your machine, plug into an electrical outlet and start the motor by turning the motor switch to the right. Okay, great. This all makes sense. So now to thread, oh, I didn't, that was the other thing. I probably should have grabbed some yarn, right? Or some thread. Um, so looking at this, I'm going to need to figure out, I could probably use, I guarantee I have something in my craft room that I can use to replace this little, um, little spool pin there. In fact, I probably have an extra one from one of my machines. All right. So that's just how to thread it. Some, a little bit of tips on how to sew. Great. How to pick the right tension, seam guide, how to change the needle and how to oil your machine. Okay, great. All very important. Then there's also things to make on the singer and it's just some cute little patterns. Oh, cute. So it tells you a couple of tips, things to do to help, which is great. And then on this side, what is it showing you? Shows you quick how to draft your own apron. So a little apron and then also how to draft your own pillow co uh, cover. So this is really cute. The fact that this is included in this is a big deal because these are typically lost. So that is great news. All right. Well, what I found, I found, um, I have a set of these cheap little bamboo crochet hooks that I don't use because I use metal, but if it's perfectly in here, um, I could cut it, but I don't really need to, I don't think. Uh, so we are going to pop our yarn right on there. Now let's look at the instructions that we have. We have some instructions right here. Okay, place through a set, follow the arrows and thread each step below. So we are gonna come under here or through there, okay. Good thing I brought my tweezers. Okay, so we are going to go through this. This kind of feels like uh, doing a serger. So the whole point of me getting this, um, yes, it's adorable. <laughs> Yes, uh, but number two, because it could be something I travel with when we go to the cabin, um, you know, could be super fun. Okay, step two, looks like it goes around the tensioner and then back up through here. Okay, awesome. So there's three, four is through here. Five is through the needle. 
All right, well, I had to go grab my glasses and then I had to look at the instructions again. So now we're gonna try this. It's interesting because the needle hole is actually on the side. So that's different than any machine I've ever used. Okay, and we pull it through. All right, step one is good. If it, we'll see if, see. it seems like it's gonna work. Okay, so the next step is to plug her in and hopefully, hopefully everything is fine. So that's off. That's on. And then I think we just, it's, it seems so odd because it's so simple. All right, let's just try, cause there's no bobbin. There's no bobbin. This is just, it's weirding me out. All right, we're gonna put our presser foot down. There's nothing to put my foot on. So we are gonna go like this. Oh, there we go. Okay, so what's happening is this is getting stuck up here. That's why it's not working. So turn it off. It's this little thing up here. <gasps> it's working! Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh, it looks great. Oh, hello. Okay. So you can't control much. You can stitch. Oh, you could go backwards with the hand crank. Okay. This thing up here is what's bothering it because I'm making it work. Okay. Let's, let's see. So here, and of course I'm doing it on white. Let's do it on yellow so I can show you what this looks like. In fact, let's just stitch two pieces together as we would. All right, so what I'm finding, my biggest issue is going to be here. So I'm gonna have to find a fix. I wonder if I could just put it from here. No, that's the tension, not gonna work. Um, so if I had a freestanding one, in fact, let me see. We can just kind of make shift here. Okay, I mean, that's, that's something, it works. So we'll try a makeshift one just for now. See if that does anything different. Oh yeah, definitely is a lot easier. Okay, so we have our yarn, our thread in here, pop her down. Yeah, it's, it's definitely, you can't go backwards, but you can turn it, maybe, and go like this. And, Right, so now let's take a look. Oh, it's like a perfect seam. Look at that. And then here is what it looks like on this side. You can see these perfect little stitches and it does a chain on the back. So there is no bobbin. So it's what it's doing is it's chaining on the back to keep it in place. Wow. Okay, so um, pros, it's adorable. It's stinking adorable. Uh, I love it to add to my, even if I just have it on my shelf with the, um, you know, adorable cover on top of it. Uh, for traveling, I think it'll also be really great because it's not, it's sturdy, but it's not too heavy. But I don't know, I think it's adorable. Let me know what you think. If you have ever played around with one of these vintage, um, like kids singers, let me know. I think that it's fantastic. And when I also think about who the intended audience was, um, so easy for, so, for Sue to sew. It really is marketed. This was marketed in the late 50s, early 60s for kids to learn how to sew, specifically women. I wonder why. Um, but 
I think that it definitely has some uses and the fact that even today it still works. It, I mean, no problems whatsoever. I am missing this piece. I probably could find one if I search online. I bet I could find someone that has an extra one or someone that has a 3D printer could probably make something. But honestly, I feel like you know, just having a portable thread holder would actually do the same job and it would be just as easy. So that is it, everybody. Um, uh, yeah, hopefully you like this video. I mean, was it worth $42 that I spent? Oh yeah, it was free. Remember? Girl math. <laughs> Girl math. It was free. Uh, so that's it, everybody. Quick little video today just to bring you into my world. And until next time, see ya!